We do have uh, still a lot of uh, concerns and, and things to address related to sustainable water, uh, energy, the future energy demands uh, for the world, uh, waste valorization also, we have a significant uh, issue not only from the environmental point of view but also from the socio-economic and even from the chemical point of view it's uh, some of the waste that is produced uh, in large quantities all around the world. Actually it's probably not only the biggest barrier for kiting but a general great barrier for biomass or these alternative carbon and nitrogen resources in general is the efficiency of the process. So they have either they have complex structure, they are biopolymers, bio stuff, very complex structure, difficult to activate, difficult to assess. And once you activate them, it is difficult to stop in a particular stage. At this stage, most research work in the area of sustainable engineering are pretty much in analysis phase. But in the long run, we eventually have to move forward to making advanced decisions to design not only a specific plan or specific process, but to design and optimize the entire life cycle of the product, or to design and optimize the entire ecosystem, including engineering systems, energy systems, or even socio-economic systems. Another problem is the price of the study material. This is Earth's second most abundant biomaterial. Uh, it shouldn't be expensive, but based on the current processing, it is very expensive. It is and not yet compatible with uh, non-renewable resources uh, in the price-wise. I'm also a young researcher who started only five years ago as an uh, independent person. Mm, but personally, uh, my suggestion is probably not to follow the crowd. The first one is really, I would say, follow your heart. Um, there are many very important scientific problems to pursue and there are a lot of scientific challenges to really address. In the meantime, we are facing a lot of external pressures in terms of funding, in terms of political policy and many other concerns. But it's always very important to address the most critical problems that we are facing in our, in our specific domain and in the scientific community despite all external factors. Motivation. Uh, dedication and most importantly resilience. Resilience is an important quality that I uh, found uh, absolutely essential in order for young scientists to progress and to success in their careers. But as a young researcher, there are a lot more exciting stuff if we create a new path. The next big advance in the broader area of sustainable chemical engineering, in my opinion, will be really in this called multi-scale systems engineering area or multi-scale sustainable engineering area. Because the scope of sustainable chemical engineering is so broad, it covers everything from the fundamental chemistry, fundamental materials development, catalysis, to all the way up to on sustainable manufacturing and even to the global supply chain and ecosystems. Sustainable chemistry and engineering are evolving very, very fast. So the next, it is a bit difficult to precisely predict what is the next big thing in sustainable chemistry and engineering. And that is the exciting part. Uh, I still have the feeling that the first person that eventually manages to valorize leaning towards the production of uh, uh, selectively one or two uh, chemical products that can be further utilized for different purposes will, will get the Nobel Prize to start with. It has something to do how are we going to better utilize solar energy in a direct or indirect manner.